Hello and welcome to BlizzCon Line Day 2, and thank you all so much for joining us for this Hearthstone Q&A, where you sent in your questions, and we're going to answer as many as we can in the next 30 minutes. My name is Chris, and I'm a community manager here on the Hearthstone team, and we've got a fantastic group of panelists joining me today. Let's introduce you to them. First up, Hearthstone Game Director, Ben Lee. Greetings. Next up, Senior Game Designer, Alec Dawson. Hey, everybody. And last, but certainly not least, we've got game designer Joe Killing It Killian, everybody. Hey there. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Now, folks, before we dive into this Q&A, wanted to quickly recap the major announcements from day one of BlizzCon Line for Hearthstone, in case you missed it. First up, we announced our brand new year in the Year of the Griffin. Throughout this year, you'll see expansions hearkening back to the roots of Hearthstone in World of Warcraft. And kicking that off, will be the first expansion of the year. Forged in the Barrens. Next up, we gave our first look at our brand new game mode, Hearthstone Mercenaries. And if you're curious to know more, dive into the VODs from day one and you'll get some more info. Now, we're going to dive into your questions and give you some answers. First up, we've got Demetrius. Demetrius is asking, what does the future hold for the reward track and how will the potential changes affect the free-to-play Hearthstone experience? Ben, what do you got for Demetrius? So you know, with, uh, with the, uh, the Dark Moon Fair expansion, we launched our brand new reward track system. We got off to a little bit of a rocky start, and you know our players are aware of that. We've made some really big, great changes since then. I think by the end of the expansion, players are going to be seeing that they're going to be getting significantly more gold and other rewards uh, for playing their kind of normal experience of Hearthstone. Um, but as for the future, one of the big changes that we're making is kind of how uh, the rewards track is structured. So if you're in the later levels right now, say 48 or 49, it's around 5,000 experience to get a level. And you get 300 gold for that. We're going to be splitting our levels in half. So you know, it'll be 2,500 experience roughly, and you're going to get 150 gold. We're going to be doing that across the entire track. What this means is that there's less time and less investment between each time you get a reward. So you're getting those cool moments and that fun payout more often. We're also going to be slightly increasing some of the rewards on the track, and there's going to be a few new surprises that we haven't detailed yet that we hope players are going to love. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. Next up, we've got Andrew asking, will duels continue to see support? I was given the impression that the cards were in rotation would rotate more than we have seen. Maybe new hero powers, treasures to grow with the new expansions. Ben, that's you again. So throughout the year, we're going to be seeing more additions to duels. Um, later this year, we're going to be seeing new heroes getting added to the mode. We're really excited to that. That adds a lot of new variety to it. But we don't want to take anything away. Players have invested their time and effort into unlocking these different characters, abilities, uh, and treasures. And we want to make sure that we respect that. Um, however, in uh, the Forge and the Barons expansion, duels is going to be seeing the addition of two expansions. Obviously, first is Forged in the Barrens, and the second is Journey to Angoro. There's tons of fan favorite cards in there, and we're really excited to see how players react to quests and other cool mechanics from that expansion. More dinos, always great. Next up, Katsu asks, how do you decide which famous characters from World of Warcraft get to become heroes and legendaries, and which ones don't? Joe? It's a it's a pretty fun process. I mean, as we're going through the set and designing everything, you know, we've picked a theme and we start looking around in that environment and finding the characters that interest us, finding characters that people are excited about. I mean, if you look at Forge and the Barons, we showed off Mancrick, and Mancrick is just such a great example of like an iconic character that everybody knows about in the Barons. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Tim comes at us with the next question. Tim asks, how will the introduction of the core set affect class identity? Are you adding or subtracting things from any class's kit? Alec, let's toss that one to you, my friend. Yeah, um, there's a little bit of adding in terms of cards coming in. There's also a little bit of subtracting. So it's, it's really focused on refining what class identity is currently in modern Hearthstone. I think one example as you look at Rogue and some of the identities that they've picked up over time throughout Hearthstone's history, so you might see a Burgle card come back for a year, and because that's part of what Rogue does now, they'll have Burgle cards from time to time. I think um, 
really looking at some of the other things, how we want classes to spec out in the future as well. Uh, for, so for this year in Druid, and you'll see some of the removal pieces go out. So you, you'll see Wrath go away, so Swipe go away, but you'll see them do removal via Feral cards. So you might see a card like Feral Rage come back. You might see a card like Pounce come back, and that's how they're going to be actually taking minions out. So we're giving them more of a refined look at how we want them to be a modern Hearthstone uh, with still retaining a lot of that class identity. Awesome. Thanks, Alec. Next up, Savannah asks, what inspired Frenzy as the new keyword for Forged in the Barrens? Joe, sauce this one to you, my friend. I mean, I think the Horde inspired Frenzy. You know, uh, Forged in the Barrens is very thematic and around the horde and we were looking for a keyword that kind of embodied the you know the strength and resilience of the horde and we thought frenzy fit really well because you know you damage the character and they're not dead yet so they have the ability to come back with some awesome power awesome rodrigo comes at us with his next question the new core set is awesome and refreshing but are you planning to introduce 29 new cards with every course at refresh or just on this occasion? Alec, what do you got to say? Uh, not 29 cards every core refresh. I, I think this year is definitely the big moment. So this is where the largest amount of new cards are going to be added to the game. And we may see some new cards in future years, but I would expect a smaller number. I think when we're thinking about the core set and how we're going to refresh it later on, uh, you know, next year, we'll probably look about 30%. That'll be probably be where we start and ballpark and talk about, okay, what is 30% of this core set coming in and out every year? What does that look like? Is that the right number? Uh, but that's what we're, we've been talking about right now. You know, we're just off, obviously seeing reception to it and everything like that's going to, you know, uh, have some play there as well. Corky's got our next question. We're going to toss this one to you, Joe. Corky asks, what challenges, design, cool factor, uniqueness, do you typically encounter when trying to one-up legendaries from previous sets? Joe? I mean, it's not always about, you know, one-upping something, but I think uh, a great example of, of legendaries that we've kind of played off of from other legendaries in the past are the old gods from Darkmoon Fair. When we were designing those out, we looked back at, you know, a lot of the old god designs from Whispers of the Old Gods and, and how they kind of acted. And like Cthune and Whispers of the Old Gods, it was all about building Cthune up and, and creating this big, powerful creature. And so we kind of took that theme and idea of building this big, powerful Cthune up and kind of changed it into this mechanic where you're shuffling in the five pieces so we still have that you know call back to the original card but it's fun and interesting in its own new way sweet man thanks joe jonathan's got our next question jonathan asks do you foresee hearthstone becoming more biased towards aggro or control decks do you as game designers have a preference for one or the other alec I would look at, uh, do I see it becoming more biased towards aggro control decks? Uh, you know, the meta will sort of determine uh, where Hearthstone at, at any point in time is leaning towards one or the other. I think here, though, one of the biggest things we've changed over the years is how control decks, you know, finish games or how they end games, where we want them to, we want to give control decks finishers that actually close out the game rather than getting a ton of value and resources at the end of the game. You know, I think over looking back at the last year, some things we learned from were cards like Archivist Louisiana and, you know, Priest Galcron, where the way they were going to win was going to take the other opponent to fatigue and just have more cards. We want you to have big endgame finishers that are actually going to close out the match for you. So that's that's kind of how you'll see control decks shift a little bit, um, you know, with this year and hopefully into the next future years of Hearthstone. Thanks, Alec. As a control player myself, pretty excited about that. Next up, Steven asks... What's the team's philosophy regarding RNG? What kind of RNG do you think is healthy? And what kind do you try to avoid? Alec, let's toss this one to you again. Yeah, I think the RNG that we've been successful at most has been a bit more contained RNG, um, where, you know, oh, it can come from this limited pool of things. I think something like Spare Parts in the past was a good example of that. I think Lackeys were a good example of that. You know, there was a, maybe a bit much, too much resource generation with Lackeys in particular, but they are okay, you would get a lackey and you understood what the subset was so you could actually have an idea of what to play around. I think sometimes Hearthstone, when we do these big over-the-top, this could be anything, we 
uh, RNG, you know, like the Yogg moments, we want to make sure that those are powered correctly because if those things ever become too powerful, it can it can it can create some um, you know some unhealthy moments, I would say. So those are the things that we look out for when we look at RNG. Cool. Alvin's got the next one. Alvin asks, who writes the flavor text for your cards? And why are they so funny? Joe, tell Alvin why they're funny. Well, uh, Val, one of our writers and designers, actually heads up that whole process. And once we have all the art and designs for all the cards in, she collects them all. And then when she actually sends it out to the entire team. And so it becomes this collaborative process with everybody pitching different jokes and ideas for the flavor text. And then we go through and pick the ones that are most exciting. And so, you know, it becomes funny because it's all of these great people on the team coming together and pitching all their fun ideas. Team effort. Love it. Lance asks, is there a chance the team could look into improving the dust economy of the game? Ben, let's toss this one to you. So free to play economy is a pretty hot topic and you know there's definitely some challenges in talking about it but I think at its core you know we've made really big strides over the last couple of years in terms of making Hearthstone approach more approachable as a game. You know, last year we introduced uh, no duplicates across all rarities. At the same time we also introduced real competitive decks for returning in new players. Those decks are designed by our final designers and you know they are real legitimate competitive decks that players can just get into, play on the ladder, you know, as soon as they come into the game. Um, this year our core set is kind of our big change in terms of you know how we approach the game and how easy it is for players to get into. There's a huge amount of free cards that players are getting access to. And you know, we've put them at a power level where we think that they're fair. And you know, when you look back at the old basic and classic cards, you know, there's there's some cards that auto includes, but a lot of them just didn't really, you know, meet the standards of seeing play in modern day Hearthstone. And the core set definitely feels better on that front and gives people a better, you know, a better uh, stepping stone into the game. They're kind of building blocks for some of the decks and archetypes that are gonna, we're going to see throughout the rest of the year. So kind of looping back to the dust system specifically, there's no concrete plans at the moment. It's something that we've talked about internally that we do talk about. Um, you know, the free to play economy, a, another big thing we did to improve things there is the reward system. While there was a rocky start there, I think by the end of the cycle, players are definitely going to realize and see that they've got significantly more rewards. You know, there was a post uh, that I made personally back on Reddit talking about how much we could expect players to gain in terms of their economy. And I used myself as an example. I earn around five, 6,000 in a normal expansion. You know, through, you know, it's partly through play behavior because personally, I believe the reward track has been really awesome. The way the quests are and stuff, it's really engaging. Um, but I have around 10, 11,000 gold this expansion. And I'm sure, you know, while you might not have that much more as a player out there, many of you are looking at your balances. But you're also the card packs you've obtained and other rewards. And it's been much, much better for you. So I think, you know, we don't have any tweaks for the dust economy right now. It's definitely something we're mindful of, but giving out rewards is kind of another way of achieving the same thing. Thanks, Ben. Luca's got our next question. Luca asks, will the Alliance play any part of Forged in the Barrens? And if no, why not? Joe? So we're leaning pretty heavily into the Horde, but the Alliance is definitely going to have their place. There's a lot of different areas in the Barrens that are kind of more Alliance focused. Northwatch Hold is one of those zones that we kind of explore that has those Alliance themes. And we're also introducing these 10 new mercenary characters to Hearthstone, and there's one for each class. And they actually follow the kind of um, break of Alliance and Horde, so we have five horde characters and five alliance characters so whether you like horde or alliance there's definitely going to be something in forged in the barons for you there you go alliance players there you have it now ben we're going to toss this one to you ben asks do you have any future plans for the classic format uh love the name by the way it's a great name um so in terms of the classic format and expectation setting i think our current plans are to not make changes. Um, we want players to come to Classic and experience the game as it was. Something that I think is a misconception is that everybody's experienced Classic. There are millions and millions of players that go through Hearthstone. There's, there's far more than 100 million people have ever played Hearthstone now. And many of those have never experienced Classic. And Classic's kind of a time capsule. It's the game as it was when it launched. And we want those players to be able to experience that and have fun with it. 
we also believe it's it, you know it's fun for all players so as a format in the game it's one of the ways that you can choose to play it's fully supported in terms of how it links into the rewards track quests uh, the ra you know it has a parallel rank system to wild and standard as well um you know we're obviously open-minded about feedback if you know and we really want to see what happens when players get to grips with classic if they love it and you know it's overwhelmingly positive we're definitely going to keep that on board and think about what's next so kind of want to see how it goes and we'll gauge it based on what our players tell us great thanks ben jack's next up jack asks with the addition of the core set and cards coming back in the standard is it possible for Death Knight hero cards to return to Hearthstone? Alec? It's possible for Death Knight hero cards to return. I think it's definitely possible. I think one of the things that, as a team, we want to do is probably bring back hero cards at some point for all the classes. And, and so when we do that, what's that going to look like? I think, um, so we'll probably do that sometime in the future. And maybe down the road, though, when we don't have any plans to do that within our expansions, that could be a good point in time to put, hey, the Death Knights could come back. I'm sure, I wonder if we'd make any changes to them too. You know, we, we might make a few adjustments if they came back, but I know there's a lot of nostalgia packed into them, so I think it'd be a lot of fun. Sounds good to me. Now, Joe asks probably the most important question of all, and that is what Hearthstone meme is best? And gentlemen, we're going to have all of you answer, and we're going to start it out with, of course, Joe killing it, Killian. I mean, my personal favorite memes I see are the OTK memes that people create. I love reading through those. All right. Ben, what do you got? Uh, it's got to be Boulder Fist Ogre. Good stats for the cost. <laughs> Classic. And then, Alec, what about you? I, th I think going off of Joe's, but then they have rank one legend at the end. You know, it's like, all right, I'm going to do this super elaborate OTK and then rank one legend. Sounds good. Crab has got our next question. Crab asks, how will characters and mercenaries upgrade? Do they get new abilities? Will they get higher tiers, like five stars? Ben, could you answer this one? Uh, kind of all, kind of everything, honestly. Um, so you start out with a mercenary, and I'm just going to use an example of, like, let's say, Thrall. So Thrall starts out, he's level one, and he has one ability. As you go through the game, you're going to, you know, as you gain levels on Thrall, you're going to unlock new abilities. You're going to unlock new equipment for him. Um, you're also going to be able to upgrade those pieces of equipment um, and those abilities, which makes them deal more damage, heal more, or whatever the case may be. Um, you can also you know, evolve Thrall into different versions of himself. So during the reveal that we did, uh, you know, over the last couple of days, we've shown like kind of these three forms of some characters. So you can, and you can see in the artwork, they start out, you know, younger or less experienced or just less powerful looking. And then they kind of grow in power as you progress through the game. You know, we, we haven't revealed too much about mercenaries right now. And that's a purposeful choice. We, we want to show players that something big, fun, awesome is coming. Um, but we, and we don't want to save everything till the end, but there's lots of details still to come, and we're going to be revealing more of them as we progress through the year. Fantastic. Excited to hear more about Mercenaries, Ben. Thanks so much. Fettuccini's got our next question. Fettuccini asks, Dragons got their time in the spotlight during the Year of the Dragon and Descent of Dragons expansion. The other Murlocs and I want to know, when's our time to shine? When's our expansion coming, Alec? I would love to do an, a Murloc expansion. I, I think the one thing we would think about where dragons, there's, you know, all types of different size dragons. You know, we have our, our baby whelps all the way down at the bottom and we can go all the way to 10 mana and make these big monstrous dragons, right? Uh, so I think for Murlocs, we probably have to try to, you know, increase the range a little bit of what the Murlocs are going to look like, some big buff Murlocs maybe. Uh, but at that point, yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, Murgle but gurgle all the way, you know? <laughs> Buffed Murlocs sound pretty rad. All right, Samuel, coming at us, asks, what plans do you guys have for new players that just got into the game? Ben, let's give this one to you. So, um, you know, I touched on this a little bit in a previous question. Last year, we did lots of cool changes. No duplicates, returning, you know, competitive decks for returning players. I think the core set is a really big thing for this year for our new and returning players. Um, when you, you know, when you come into the game, 
uh, the you know you have access to this huge amount of you know cards which are really great for starting new decks and they're on a much more competitive level than the basic and classic set uh, of of previous years um the unlock there are unlock requirements for them but they're really really small and if you're a if you're a returning player you probably have access to all the cards already anyway um on top of that you know we have made over the over the last year or so actually we've made significant changes to the new player quests that players get when they come into the game and we're much more generous than Hearthstone used to be. And we want players to have a much easier ramp and easier time getting into the game. It's super important to us. Uh, and, you know, for any of you out there that are picking up Hearthstone for the first time, we'd love to hear your feedback on how your experience has been. Thanks, Ben. Dave's got the next one, and he asks, what was the thinking behind making the core legendary dragons? Ysera, Malagos, Alexstrasza. Nine mana, nine mana rather than the maximum ten. Alec? When we made the new versions uh, for the course that we wanted to reflect what the previous versions have been, you know, sort of like an, an homage to them. And also, they're, they're big dragons, you know, we want to keep them high in, in stats and in cost as well. So it was mainly about fitting what the dragons, how you know them already in Hearthstone, but then giving them new text boxes because that's how we wanted to bring them into the modern gameplay of today's Hearthstone and sort of revamp them a little bit. Uh, you know, you still have some 10 mana ones though. We still got Deathwing at 10 mana and he's definitely going to do some hurt. I think that new Deathwing is one of the ones that stands out as being, okay, very similar in flavor, but just a lot more playable and it feels a lot better to put inside your deck. Awesome. Thanks, Alec. Appreciate it, man. Next up, we've got Charles asking, as a brick and mortar retailer, thank you for all your support with Fireside Gatherings. Are there any plans to return these events back on later this year or in 2022? You know, I can go ahead and answer this one, Charles. We absolutely want to bring Fireside Gatherings back to being in-person events. You know, our top priority right now is making sure that our players are safe and sound. So once that we get to a place in the world where we're able to do that, we absolutely plan on bringing those back. So great question. Can't wait to bring them back. But until then, we've got those virtual Fireside Gatherings happening. Thanks so much, Charles. Now, let's go to our next one. We've got Demetrius asking a question. Will you continue experimenting with quests? I believe they make for very fun archetypes. And I'd love to see more quests, quest synergy, and themed legendaries. Alec, let's give you another one. Yeah, uh, we love quests on the team. We think it gives us a point in you know the cycle of two years of expansions to do something very, very focused uh, that a, a class or archetype doesn't normally do. You know, And then give out these big rewards for having you complete that quest. I think we learned a lot after Ongoro, and then we went in Old Doom, we were like, okay, let's do quests again, but a little bit different. You don't have to wait a turn to get the, get the card this time. You get the immediate heater power, so that was kind of nice to get your reward immediately. And a lot, of the uh, a lot of what we wanted to do is make quests a lot more completable. So I think we've learned lessons since then, uh, even off Old Doom, so we'll probably take a bunch of those lessons. But if we do re reintroduce quests, I would want to do it Slightly differently, if we got a different twist on it. So, but yeah, we'll probably do it someday in the future. Sounds like a plan. Now, our next question was our one video submitted question. So, shout out to you, Ben. Thanks so much for the video question. Ben asks, What are some of the things the team did internally to make some of the recent big changes possible? And of course, this question is going to go to Ben Lee. Ben? So, I think something that, you know, something that some of our players know is that we've really expanded the team size over the last few years um you know the core hearthstone team was actually very small that that made and shipped the game and then the first couple of years of that the team was actually still quite small um over the last you know two three years we've really expanded the team size and it's much bigger so we have much more capacity to do lots and lots of different things you know the, the hearthstone team have always been hungry to try and experiment and create awesome and exciting new experiences i think just over the last couple of years for a whole bunch of different reasons, that's kind of just been unlocked. And you can see that in things like Battlegrounds, in Duels, in, uh, you know, mini sets, and obviously in Mercenaries coming next year. You know, Hearthstone, we want Hearthstone to be a game where you can always come back to it, and there's going to be something new and exciting and interesting. And also, you know that there's big, exciting things coming in the future. We aren't just a game that makes three expansions a year anymore. We do so much more than that now. And I think you know, our players are really happy with that. With that, And as a team, I think we're super happy with that too. It's always exciting to work on new things as well and the team you know they relish that absolutely thanks ben next question comes from mr dirt mr dirt wants to know with the new malagos dragon 
Does that mean we won't be able to play our old OTK Malagos decks? You know, or will it be in wild? Alec, let's toss this to you. Yeah, so there's a new core version of Malagos. Um, Balakai draws spells into your hands full. It's actually pretty cool. You can draw a ton of cards with that card, right? Um, and then the old Malagos, spell damage plus five, is going to go into wild. So you'll be able to experience that there. Still a lot of fun. Still can do some crazy stuff in wild there. Uh, we wanted to just make some more room. I think Malagos was a card that sometimes kept us back a little bit in terms of some of our designs. So I want to pull back a little bit. Maybe do some more interesting things with spell damage, some different variants of how you're experiencing that high spell damage threshold. Right. Thanks, Alec. Globex has our next question. This is a fun one. Will there be cross promo skins or heroes in the future? I'd love to see something such as Warrior Reinhardt or Priest Moira. Ben, what do you think? So we've actually recently just released kind of our, our, our first um far into this with the three kingdom skins that released uh actually just you know a week or so ago um the fan reaction to that i think has been almost unanimously positive we're really happy to see that you know players love this cool art and are really excited by it so it's definitely something we're open-minded to but we need to always find the right way to do that for hearthstone you know we love our license we're a warcraft game at heart and we want to make sure that we're doing things that fit you know i think you know when you look across the various Blizzard games, Three Kingdoms has fitted in in different ways. There's, you know, it, it kind of just fits into our art style in lots of different ways. Um, so we want to make sure that things that we do and put in the game as additions are still true to, you know, the core of what Hearthstone is. So the answer is yes, but we want to be careful about it. Sounds great. Thanks, Ben. Alexander asks, do you plan on releasing more cards like Transfer Student that interact with the board? Joe, let's hear from you. I mean, we love Transfer Student. It was a ton of fun to design and look at all the different boards and what what effect do we want for this specific board. And I think we could definitely see those cards in the future if we find the right designs for them, because it's definitely an, an interesting space to explore. Cool. Thanks, Joe. Eb's got our next one. Eb asks, with the introduction of the new core set, would you ever introduce new class mechanics for classes that never had any? Alec, do you have an answer for him? Yeah, we would totally do that. I think we thought about it pretty early on with Priest. I think one of the things with Priest that players wanted to see come back was some sort of shadow aspect to them, right? And we had written off, okay, face damage. So how do you do shadow without face damage? What do you do there? Um, so we talked about multiple things like, okay, what could Priest do with their hero power? Maybe that's different. Maybe they had light and shadow cards. Uh, where we ended up, we, we kept some things the same in terms of hero power for simplicity's sake and actually gameplay's sake as well. And then we're going to reintroduce how they do shadow, but and we're going to reintroduce some face damage to their archetype. So they'll be doing some more small chip damage with that goes face uh, through multiple cards. Won't be as big as five damage, but you'll see you know two, threes, and fours in, in priests, and that's how they'll re like re get uh, you know uh, reestablish their shadow identity. Awesome, cool. Thanks, Alec. Next up, Benjamin asks, will we be seeing more weapons with passive effects like Sphere of Sapiens moving forward? Now, I know we typically toss Ben questions to Ben, but got to make a change sometime. Joe, what do you got to say? Yeah, I mean, Sphere of Sapiens was another super fun design for us. And yeah, that's definitely a space that I can see us exploring more in the future. Um, we every time we're designing new sets and stuff we're always looking for these new mechanics and stuff and if we can find like a good set that really thematically works for it i think we could definitely find space for it awesome now gentlemen we're coming up on time let's ask one final question we got this question from john are there any plans to implement a random hero skin and a random coin like we have with the random card back then uh Absolutely. I think, uh, especially for hero skins, we don't have a date or, or, or any specific details to reveal about that, but it's definitely something that we're going to do. It's just a matter of when. Um, you know, when you look across the heroes, especially with the way the, um, the reward track works, we're adding lots of vanity options for players. Um, you know, players are really excited about those. They love earning them in different ways. The, the thousand win skins have been super popular over the last couple of years. Um, so we want to give people a way to really show all the different heroes that they've earned or that they have. Um, so definitely. As for the coin, um, honestly, probably, but at a you know at a lower priority because there's simply just less coins. You know, in the future, I can totally see us doing that too, though. Awesome. 
Thanks, Ben. Well, folks, that's a wrap on this Hearthstone Q&A. First off, just want to thank our panelists, Ben, Alec, and Joe, Killing It Killian, for joining us today for this Hearthstone Q&A. And obviously, we want to thank you all so much for joining us for this Hearthstone Q&A. We wouldn't be here without you all, and we greatly appreciate it. We hope you have a magical rest of your BlizzCon line. And until next time, we'll see you in the tavern. Thanks so much, everybody.